Hi everyone and I hope you're having a fantastic Monday. If you're on vacation or winter break, I hope that you guys are making the most of it and definitely finding time for some relaxation and self-care to help reset before you uh, go back to work in about a week or so. But I wanted to share with you guys this book. I posted about this the other day on my Instagram channel. Um, it's called A Whale of a Mistake and I wanted to give you a little bit more of an in-depth kind of um, I guess you could say a book review and why I love this book and how this book might be helpful for you if you are a classroom teacher or a school psychologist, school social worker, a school counselor, whatever your role might be, special education teacher. But if you're looking for ways to incorporate literacy and also tie in social emotional learning, growth mindset, helping students overcome challenges, then this is a really great book that you can explore lots of different topics with your students about when it comes to making mistakes, exploring your feelings, your emotions, how sometimes mistakes can be, um, they can feel a little bit consuming and sort of take over you and you might perseverate on that mistake that you made or a decision that you made that maybe didn't go the way that you wanted it to. But this book is such a great book. It's a really simple, easy read. The illustrations are really beautiful. Um, so this book is called, again, it's called A Whale of a Mistake. And I feel like I'm going to butcher the author's name. I don't think I'm saying this right, but Iona Hobai, Hobe. I'm not sure, like I said, if I pronounced that correctly, but I purchased my copy on Amazon and I love the back of the book. This is kind of the little description of what the book is about and I think it describes it perfectly. So on the back of the book, it says, you made a mistake. The more you worry, the more it grows and it completely weighs you down. It might even swallow you whole. So this story, it's about this little girl. So she's um, sort of the main character in the story. And the little girl in the book, she, you know, makes a mistake. And um, this is a really great way too to even kind of explore reading body language with your students. So, um, you know, you have the word, the wording up here that says, oh, and you kind of look at her face. So I love whenever I'm doing SEL lessons with my students, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, small group, whole group, like, class uh, lessons, I always will periodically stop and explore reading body language with students because, oh my gosh, it's such an important part exploring social skills with students and helping them to understand that you can tell a lot by somebody based on how they how they look, their facial features, um, you know, the expressions that they're making on their face can really help give you clues to what they're feeling, what they might be thinking, um, maybe if they might be needing a friend or someone to just go over and show a little empathy to them or maybe when you need to take a step back and realize okay that person needs their space so let me respect that so reading body language is a huge social skill that um all students i think really can benefit from exploring but anyway so you can explore body language with this so then it goes on to say you made a mistake you worry the more you worry the more it grows until it weighs you down and then, and this is a really great way as well to explore um, text to self connections with students. If you're doing, again, small group or whole group lessons with your kids, this is a really great way to maybe make a map of, you know, a list or chart of um, maybe mistakes that other students have made if it was um, not doing well in their math test or their spelling quiz or whatever the situation might be. A really great way to normalize feelings with students as well and make connections with one another. Um, even yourself as the adult, I love connecting with my students and exploring our feelings and um, letting them know that they're not the only one that feel those emotions or feel that way and that I've maybe felt the same way that they have and maybe for the same reason and maybe this is the way that I handled it and how would you handle that? So um, using books can explore, like you can explore so many different topics, which I, if you can tell by my Instagram page, I'm obsessed with using books with my students. But then it goes on to talk about how her uh, mistake ends up swallowing her whole and it kind of makes the connection of it being like a whale and that it was like for her it felt like a whale of a mistake so um people shake their heads and they say what a big mistake and then you can you know continue to explore uh feelings and body language and maybe um perspective taking and imagine you know well what might she be feeling now she's probably feeling really overwhelmed and this is a really great way as well if you do zones of regulation exploring different zones with your students so in the beginning maybe their little girl was in the blue zone she maybe she felt sad because she made a mistake and was disappointed but you can see how our zones can shift and so she went from maybe feeling in the blue zone to feeling in the yellow zone and feeling really overwhelmed um no matter what you do you still feel feel it with you 
and you can talk about how sometimes our feelings our emotions they can sit with us for a little while and that's completely normal i think sometimes you know kids feel like they shouldn't feel a certain way for a while and they expect to kind of just that you should be getting over it fast and um you know sometimes we might send the message to our, our students or our kids of you know oh it's not a big deal you know just get over it and in some ways that kind of I guess it kind of takes away from that student's feelings or that child's emotions and um, kind of minimizes how they might be feeling because whereas we maybe the adult might view it as a really small problem and not a big deal for that child it's a pretty big deal and it really did impact their day and this is a really great way to kind of explore um, that topic with students. So the other thing I love about this book is this is a really great book when you want to teach your students about not just mistakes, mistakes are learning opportunities, mistakes help us grow and you know part of growth mindset is teaching students to love making mistakes and um, kind of helping to encourage them that you know mistakes aren't failures but that those are actually lessons that are going to help you become even you know even better even stronger or even smarter when it comes to you know academics or whatever it might be but the like about this mistake is that the little girl um she kind of is sitting with her mistake and that feeling and it's really weighing heavy on her um but then i love it kind of shifts her mindset so this is a great way of exploring moving from a fixed mindset shifting into a growth mindset um and then in the book it says but when you finally gather the courage to open your eyes you are surrounded by stars and they are perfect. So kind of now you can explore with your students what little girl, you know, was feeling in the beginning of the book and how her emotions shifted. And now maybe she was feeling really overwhelmed, really like heavy and um, distraught. So now you're building uh, emotional vocabulary with students. You're helping to um, expand their vocabulary. And this is also great to tie into um, academics like writing and having students, maybe if you have an emotional word wall, you can um, add these words to that wall and then encourage students that you want them to pick maybe one or two words from the emotional you know, vocabulary word wall or whatever you call it. And now they have to incorporate that in a piece of their writing or in like their journal or um, talk about a time that or write about a time that they felt that emotion. So now she's kind of shifting her mindset in the story. Um, and then she's noticing that, you know, here there's um, kind of a shower of shooting stars. So she's, it says that you notice that there are some falling. Are they mistakes too? So this is also, again, going back to normalizing feelings, helping students understand that, you know, whereas sometimes they might be so overwhelmed and think, my gosh, like I'm, you know, sometimes students might have those feelings of I feel so stupid, I'm the only one that this would ever happen to, no, nobody else ever goes through this. But now you're helping other students see and explore the fact that, no, you're not the only one that feels that way, or you're not the only one that this has ever happened to, but it's happened to other people too. And as you have those kind of um, class-wide discussions or group discussions or one-on-one -on -one discussions with a student, you're helping opening up their eyes as well and kind of expanding the horizons of the fact that, you know, wow, this is really normal and that, you know, you felt that way too. And it's really cute sometimes when, at least for me, when I had class discussions and students are sharing out, you know, their own scenarios or things that had happened to them and other students kind of are like, oh my gosh, like really? And you are hearing them kind of develop, again, social skills and having compassion and making connections and relating to each other. So it's a really beautiful thing. And um, I strongly encourage, you know, through literacy to explore feelings with your kids, explore emotions. Um, and then again, going back to normalizing, there's a whole universe of mistakes out there. Somehow your mistake doesn't seem so big anymore. So a really great way too to realize that in the beginning you might feel really overwhelmed and you feel like you're the only one that's going through that. You realize that you know there's other mistakes out there as well and suddenly your mistake doesn't feel so big and maybe it doesn't weigh so heavily on you anymore. So then you start moving again, but now you're in control, even if you're not yet for sure, not yet sure of your destination. When you're feeling brave enough to move on, your mistake doesn't stop you anymore. I also love this to work with students on lessons related to grow through what you go through. So helping students understand that where you might have had a difficult experience or um, an obstacle that really kind of set you back, 
that you can work through that and with help and support and maybe coping tools or coping skills or talking to an adult, whether it's a classroom teacher, a parent, um, a counselor, a therapist, whomever it might be that is your support person, you can help students see that where you thought you couldn't overcome that obstacle, you actually can and it's going to make you so much stronger and so much more powerful in the end and that you can grow through anything that you go through. And I love this book for, you know, incorporating that kind of topic or at least allowing that the ability to explore that topic with your students um so i just love how it talks about how um your mistake it doesn't stop you anymore and you wave goodbye and your mistake waves back fading wave after wave after wave so kind of relating it to nature a little bit and you know like the ocean um you know the waves come and go our emotions can come and go sometimes and before you realize that your mistake is in the past and maybe you won't even think twice about it and it's come and gone you sort of ridden the wave and you worked your way through it so I love that book um and this could be a cute book as well uh, maybe to tie in science and um you know the universe stars the ocean waves so you know it's I mean it seems kind of silly but there's a lot of really fun ways that you can take something like literacy emotion social emotional learning and just tie it so seamlessly into your academics with science writing reading um, maybe math and you know coming up with computations and equations and things like that so I really love this book for that reason so again it's a really simple read it's a quick read um, there's not very many you know words to the pages but I love the illustrations they're so detailed they're so fun you could even maybe have students make their own book as a class come up with your own book about mistakes and what they learned what your students learned from that mistake or how they overcame the obstacle that they faced so lots of ways to explore social emotional learning through academics and i just wanted to share this book with you guys and if you have this book share with me maybe um, send me a message or leave a comment of how you've used this book with your students or your child at home if you don't have this book but you are curious to um learn more about it or use it with your students send me a message i'd love to know what your thoughts are if you purchase it and um another book that i wanted to quickly just share with you guys is this book this one is called like a girl and it's by Lori Degman and illustrated by Mara Penny and this book I love because it's perfect for if you are um, a classroom teacher or a, a, you know someone who's a specialist or does counseling and you want to create something like a girls group with your students or even for you know boys and teaching them about how powerful some women can really be and um, kind of expanding their horizons too um, you know just going beyond you know when you think of famous people in the world and oftentimes sometimes people just immediately think of you know male leads or um, characters or uh, roles but this is a really great way to expand students understanding of positive influential females that have made a really positive impact in society in the world around us um, and the back of this book it talks about change the world like a girl from the land to the sea change the world like a girl so we can all be free and this book it covers um, I believe it's 24 different influential women that have really made a profound impact in the world um, from you know for modern day, you know, present day females to women in the past, like Amelia Earhart, um, Irene Sendler, there's Harriet Tubman. It talks about, it names so many amazing women. Um, and, you know, there's Frida Kahlo, Rosa Parks, Mother Teresa. So what I also like about this book too is it shows important women and you know in society but from so many different cultures and so many different backgrounds and i think this is an amazing book to use with students um because i think that there's going to be at least you know one student in your class who's going to feel really excited when you read this book to them and they're going to almost feel a connection to someone because maybe they share the same culture or ethnicity um so i just love the book and it, it gives you know really you know, throws a park so saying stand up like a girl re by refusing to stand Stand up like a girl by extending your hand. So referencing Mother, Mother Teresa. Um, stand up like a girl, raise your fist and resist. Stand up like a girl, keep on going to persist. So I love how they kind of jump back and forth between, um, you know, events that happened, you know, before our time and events that happened, you know, while we've been alive and uh, maybe we, you know, heard of those events on the news. Prevail like a girl using senses unknown. So they referenced Helen Keller. Prepare like a girl with the strength all your own. 
create like a girl let your inner self shine create like a girl using shape and design so this is also a great way to explore with students um different uh careers that you could pursue and showing um you know boys and girls that women have a place in science or in art and being creative in um philanthropy and education um owning businesses being creative writers so there's just so many different topics that you can really explore flying a plane and referencing amelia Earhart. um so like a girl let your free spirit fly so like a girl and you may land on mars so referencing two famous astronauts that were females who really made an impact you know in the world of science so again i just love this book and the it's a simple read you know again there's not very many words to the pages but you can explore so much with this book you can assign students um you know a person from the book and then you can create a whole research project so now you're tying in technology tying in books having the students maybe if you have a school library pulling a couple books related to these um influential women and then the students could explore um doing research and having to study that person and the back of the book for each woman in here the 24 females that um that this book talks about the back of the book gives a little bit of like an autobiography on the woman or biography i should say on the woman so there's a few little facts so you could even maybe make a photocopy of the page and cut out the pieces um that go to whichever student is assigned to that that person so that's something that they can use that as a starting point and then using like their chromebooks or their the media center whatever space you have access to in your building they can then begin a research project again and explore that person and maybe have them um you know do a google slide where the first slide it's about you know their upbringing their family their what their in what their historical moment was in society um and how were they a leader how are they a role model to other women or other boys and girls so just such a great book and i wanted to share this with those of you who like i said maybe do girls groups or are looking for books on um you know nonfiction books to use with your students to explore research projects with them but this book is a fantastic find this one i also purchased on amazon um this book it says it retails for $16.95, but I'm pretty sure I, I found it on Amazon. I want to say I maybe spent like $12, definitely no more than $15 on Amazon. Um, likewise with this book, The uh, Whale of a Mistake, I also purchased on Amazon and it retails for like $17 or $18, but I purchased it for less again through Amazon. Amazon is a fantastic place to buy books. Um, sometimes, you know, at our school book fairs, there's so many books that I just love and I want so badly, but you know, the cost does add up quickly. So usually what I like to do, even if I'm out like at Target or at a bookstore, I will take a picture of the book. And then when I go home or on my phone, on my Amazon app, I'll quickly look up the book and then I'll purchase it. But I just wanted to share two different books with you guys, um, kind of as book recommendations. And I hope you enjoyed this little sort of review and tips and ideas on how you can tie in SEL with your students and academics or even at home if you're a parent and you want to um, you know pursue some social emotional learning with your students or your children at home and make it kind of a fun exploration project that you as a family work on together these are some really great starting points to use with your kids so i hope you guys enjoy that i will see you in the next video and i hope everyone has a fantastic rest of their monday bye guys